Hello reporters and welcome back to my channel. In this week's episode of her Coffee Convos podcast, Kale really dropped some sad story. I almost said tea, but it's not tea, of course. It's just some sad stories and information about her son, Isaac uh, Rivera. And let me just warn you guys, when she was sharing these stories, I got really sad. Like I practically teared up uh, at a certain point because it just makes me so sad on his behalf to see what it is that he has gone through. So first of all, she kind of opens the conversation by saying, say what you want to say about her like life decisions and how reckless they've been, but nothing has hurt her son Isaac more than her divorce with Hoppy, which I felt like was a very weird thing to say because it's almost like she's giving herself like free reign to do whatever she wants, because according to her, nothing is ever going to be more painful that to her firstborn, never mind what's painful to the other kids, right? Than her divorce from Javi Marroquin. I don't know, maybe I'm misinterpreting that, but it just felt like a really weird thing to say, especially when you kind of follow it up by going on about all of the trauma that your oldest son has endured, right? So um, she says that there was a time where Isaac spent more time with Javi than with Joe, of course, with them being a nuclear family, uh, when Kale was married to Javi, and then Joe not having 50-50 custody at that time, it does make sense. And she says that it's actually even after the divorce as well, which was really news to me because I thought that at that point, by the time she divorced from Javi, that Joe was very like heavily involved in the picture. But apparently he, Isaac was still kind of more of a Javi's boy, so to speak. And so she says that after the divorce, she and Javi had this arrangement where Isaac would spend like, you know, whatever amount of time that he wanted to spend with Javi and his brother Lincoln as well. But, and that Isaac looked at Javi as a father figure, even more than he looks at Joe as a father figure at this point in his life, right? That's not to say that it's the same over oh, today. Of course it's not, right? Because he doesn't really have contact with Javi like that. But at this time in his life, you know, in this picture when it was taken, that's what the situation was, right? And, um, not only that, and I didn't even notice that Lincoln was in this picture until just now. He's just down there. But not only that, but Kale says that Isaac felt resentful of Lincoln because Lincoln got to be with Javi 24-7 after the divorce, and whereas Isaac did not get to do that, right? And he didn't really understand why, because to him, this was his dad. So why is it that his little brother can go off with his dad, but not him? Like, I can't even imagine like what was going through his head, what he thought happened. Like, did he think that Javi chose one son over the other? Like he didn't, he didn't understand the concept that they had different dads or whatever. And so I just can't remember, imagine how painful that must have been for him to try to reconcile in his very young mind. So Kale says that Javi is a very fun hands-on dad and involved and uh, that Joe doesn't get to do those sorts of things with Isaac, but no shade though, which I kind of felt like was shade because as far as I'm aware, I thought that Joe was a pretty hands-on dad as well, but I guess things are different behind the scenes or something like that. But I think it all kind of goes back to V. V, like, you know, I couldn't help but think, oh my God, the amount of times that this girl, Kale, has shaded your husband on her various podcasts, including in front of your face on your baby mama's podcast, right? And then the leaked text messages where she's like talking poorly about him and how, you know, she thinks he's ugly and she doesn't understand how you like get aroused for him and stuff like that. Like, I just can't imagine. I think we need to snap one good time because it just feels like this is shade. And then like just saying, oh, but I don't mean this in a shady way doesn't really like absolve that in my opinion, but I digress. So Again, like I said, this story was very heartbreaking to me, to be honest with you guys, because again, I can't imagine the sort of pain that Isaac was going through there and just like not really understanding what was going on with his family. Remember, he was super duper young when Kale and Javi got together. So like these have to be some of his first like memories and everything like that. So just to like not have that anymore had to be really, really, really difficult. Um and mind you, Kale says that to this day, by the way, I think that all of this is TMI now that I think about it. I'm like, wait a minute, why do I know all this stuff? But anyway, Kale says that to this day, Isaac does not want to see Javi whenever Javi picks up a Lincoln or they go and drop off Lincoln at Javi's house or anything like that. Like he just, it's too painful for him. And um, I just, you know, start wondering what happened that I, that they stopped spending time together. Because even if you see this photo of them at the water park, this was well after the divorce. Like, 
Isaac is a lot older in this picture with his hair dyed there than he was in this initial photo, which was taken right after the divorce was announced. Remember the scene on the show where Joe sits down with Isaac after Kale tells him that he's not going to have a room at Javi's house or see him. Joe says that they're going to arrange something and he's going to like make it his business to make sure that he gets to spend time with Javi, right? So he's so much smaller there than here. And it really did. I remember following this situation on social media for a while. So I, I wonder what happened, like what made it stop, right? Um, I think that Kale kind of implied that the reason that things fizzled out was because Javi eventually created a new family with Lauren. Remember, he has a, a new son named Eli that he shares with Lauren. And don't forget that Javi was for the streets as well, right? Like he was busting it down between Kale. They were still banging after the divorce. Then he had Brianna. Then he had another girl that he called his corazón, his heart on Twitter. I very vi vividly remember that because Kale dragged him and she made fun of him so hard uh, because he had only been seeing her for two weeks. And then they broke up, of course. Uh, so there was her. So that's three people. And then there was Lauren. So Lauren was the backup plan to back up. Remember, we used to do like Kiki about that on the show. Uh, well, the recaps. So Kale, he wanted to get with Kale. Brie was the backup. Then there was Lauren. And so he went through all of them. It didn't work out. So he settled on Lauren and had another kid with her. And so that is, I guess, something that kept him really busy and kind of made his relationship with Isaac eventually sort of fizzle out. Um, but I do wonder if like it's something that Lauren didn't want either. Maybe Lauren um, felt like two boys was enough for her, right? Like I could accept your biological son, but not your stepson, in addition to our son as well. Like, it's just too much. It's too chaotic. Uh, I would love to get some more intel on that, not to blame Lauren, but just to kind of know like what was going on and if she kind of had any say in that. Um, now, uh, she, Kale at this point starts crying about the situation. And listen, I don't blame her. I would too. It really is heartbreaking just knowing that like your child is going through so much emotionally and it's because of a relationship that you couldn't bear to be in any longer. Her relationship with Javi was very toxic and it was for the best that they split up. You know what I mean? Um, so she says that this is pretty much going to be a lifelong trauma for Isaac. And she talks about how like his relationship didn't just stop at Javi, right? Isaac was very close to Javi's family as well. Like his mom, his brother, his sister, like the brother I believe is a godparent of his. Like he really was like tight there. So he lost all of them in the divorce. And that's a lot of uh, people to lose, like just all of a sudden, right? It's not like they're rude to him or anything like that. Like they still say hello to him and whatnot whenever like they cross paths or anything like that. Remember they live in a small town, but it's just not the same. It's not like this love and welcoming ambiance that was there before. <sighs> It just makes you wonder why um, Javi hasn't tried to kind of bridge the gap, right? Because I get it, like with a little kid and everything, it might have been complicated because Lincoln probably already had feelings dealing with the divorce and having a new little brother. So Javi wanted to focus on him. But I don't know, like he made that commitment to Isaac as well. You know, I don't know. It's all just so complicated. You guys haven't even been step parents and then like you kind of like split up with the person and the kids and then like you kind of like stop having contact with them, even though you were really close. Like, what is it like for you on the other end? Because it's not like Javi was, but at the same time, maybe Kale didn't want him around Isaac for a little bit of time when they were feuding over Brianna because Javi was doing some really petty and immature and grimy stuff with Brianna. And then it led to Kale and Brianna, like kind of like physically fighting at the reunion. So I could see why she wouldn't want like, you know, such a grimy person around her son. So maybe that also kind of exacerbated things before, Javi eventually got with Lauren. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just, I like, I remember like in the seasons when like I, Javi came in the picture, he was acting like he was the best father for Isaac and that Joe wasn't anything. And that like, you know, he was going to fulfill that role. Then the, when they moved States and everything, like he really wanted to push Joe out of the picture. So the idea that like he pushed so hard to get rid of Joe as a father in Isaac's life, just to kind of discard him after his breakup with Kale, it's like, well, what was all that for then? You know what I mean? It just seems really, really cruel at the end of the day. Now, Kale's co-host, Lindsay, talks about how children are ultimately uh, collateral damage in divorces because they don't understand how to process these things yet. And they take everything super personally and whatnot, whereas adults can process and move on. For example, Javi's got a new family and then... Um, Kale has a whole new family as well, which I'm wondering, what does she mean about Kale having a new family? Is it like that she's got two new kids by uh, another guy? Is it the Elijah thing? 
and how they potentially have a kid together as well. Perhaps more on the way. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, that was rather interesting. And, you know, I do believe her that it's just really difficult for children, divorces and whatnot. So um, now when it comes to the abandonment situation, the quote unquote abandonment of Isaac, Kale wants to let us know that it wasn't intentional on Javi's part. OK, and. And that like he might not even be aware of the pain that that has ultimately caused Isaac. But listen, I don't think so. I think it's very weird that this guy would go from living with a child and wanting to be the child's father and like pushing the dad out of the picture to going ahead, having more kids and forgetting about the child and not thinking about him. Like there's no way he doesn't think about Isaac and wonder. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's there's no way, you know, like some, I have some people that I need to call back. I was supposed to call them back like before I left on my trip to Tunisia. And I just never did because I was so like flustered with all that I had to do. And it's still always on my mind. You know, I haven't found a time where I feel like being on the phone. And then with the time difference, these are my Canadian friends. Um, you know, it's still on my mind. So like, and I, I haven't lived with these friends. I, I was not trying to be their mom or anything like that, but they're still on my mind all the time. So the idea that like, this isn't intentional and that like Javi is just like, you know, kind of like absent-minded about it. I'm not sure how I feel about that, to be honest with you. Not that like, it's like, you know, an obligation or anything like that. I, I, I do think that it's on his mind or whatever. Um, I think that she and Kale could have put together some kind of divorce plan to have like good conversations with Isaac about the situation and everything like that, just to make sure that he is processing things properly. I'm pretty like, does Kale, has Kale ever mentioned putting her kids in therapy or anything like that, by the way, because I feel like this would be something really nice to go through in therapy to help Isaac sort of untangle the entire web and situation of what happened there. If it's such a big trauma in his life, you know what I mean? Like get started early just to help him sort of move past this situation. Now, um, I do wonder why Kale hasn't tried to talk to Javi about like how painful this has been for Isaac to this day, because there was a time when they were quite close. I believe it was last year when they were doing TikToks together and everything before they fell out again over a TikTok that Kale posted, a flirty one with him. Um, but like she launched this kind of like influencer agency or whatever, and then she signed Javi as one of the influencers. So I'm kind of like, well, if you guys were close enough to do all that, then why wouldn't you like have a conversation about Isaac, right? Like all that flirting you guys are doing, all that mumbling and cackling in Nicki Minaj's voice. But you're not talking about the most important thing, which is like how Isaac feels and how he's processing the divorce and how it's still been really difficult for him all these years later. Like how many years has it been? I think it's been like seven years at this point. Like I think it's worth conversation, no? Huh. Anyway, to wrap up the podcast, Kale says that if Javi knew the extent of the pain, he would have a conversation with Isaac. And again, I'm like, then why don't you kind of tell him about it and push for that conversation with Isaac? Is it not something that would help him? I don't know. Maybe, maybe she feels as though Isaac is not yet like in a place where he can have this conversation, right? Like it's something that's bothering him, but he can't process it because at this point he still doesn't even want to see Javi. You know what I mean? So maybe that's the situation. But again, like how how long ago were these pictures taken of Isaac and Javi at like the water park? Like I, I feel like this was even recently that we saw them hanging out together. Um, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reverse Google image search this photo, and then I'll pull up a year for you to have the receipts, right? So this was three years ago in 2020. So why is it that they were hanging out three years ago in 2020 at this water park? So there was a, some sort of relationship, right? But now Isaac can't even bear to look at hobby. What happened between 2020, summer of 2020 and summer of 2023? I feel like something is kind of being hidden there in this entire story, but I digress. Guys, what do you think about the situation? Is it something that you've ever kind of experienced? Because I know there's a lot of blended families these days, step parents, step kids um, that come and go. Let me know what you think about it. Um, and maybe if you guys have some advice from for Kale on how to manage this and how to manage Isaac's feelings and all of this, um, you know, as usual, put all that stuff in the comment section down below and we'll chat. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.